Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, we're going to give you another bolo. It's actually comics from the newspapers. Now, that may sound a little odd there. I've talked about newspapers many times, but the comics in them can net you some good profits. It's just like any other category. 95% of what you find won't be worth it. It's that other 5% that makes your day. We're going to cut over there right now, and we're going to talk about them. So here we are. This is newspaper comics. These are the ones that would have been in the daily papers, the dailies they call them, or the Sunday comics. Uh, right here is an actual bound edition of many different ones put together. $1,600 is what this one went for. They're basically full page ones from, let's say, 32 to 33 in very good condition for these. They're all going to be yellow for the most part when you find them like this. If you find them that aren't yellow, they're really worth a lot of money for the most part. But this is typical. You can see that they're yellowed on the edge. The inside is very nice. Nice graphics, nice color, nice actual um, ones. Little Orphan Annie is very collected still. Gasoline Alley. Obviously, Tarzan. These are all key ones here. It's a big chunk of these. You could cut these up and sell them by actual uh, comic strip themselves. So put all the Tarzan together and such forth. And some people will do that because it's a whole year's worth of these. It may be worth more money cutting up, believe it or not. So this person could buy these and then turn around, cut them up, and then remarket them too. So... They do sell. I look for the books more than anything else. I very, very rarely find them. I've only found a few in my life, but they were well worth the look, let me tell you. Here's just another one. This one went for $800. Um, typical, you've got Popeye. There's Snow White. The Disney ones usually do very well. Mickey Mouse, uh, Snow White. If you had a bunch of these together, you could really do, do pretty well by splitting this up in some cases. I don't cut up everything, but in some cases, it's better to cut up some of these depending on what they are. If I find them in the in a newspaper stack, I will cut them up and get rid of all the rest of the newspaper, uh, depending on if there's no good titled newspaper. So $800 for this book of them. Now, I've talked about cutting up newspapers and things, too, because you can do ads with them. Again, most of them aren't worth much, so don't just think you got a bunch of old newspapers. You're going to make some money. Vintage ones, specific ones, and specific vehicles. I have a video on that as well. You can look back through my collectibles playlist. This one here is a Primo one. It's the first 12 daily comic strips of Superman from 1939. This one is the whole origin story. It's the first 12 daily comic strips. 750 bucks for these little pieces of paper from 1939. It's all there, original. I mean, this is the first Superman story you are going to find. His whole story from start to finish, the whole origin story. It's been rehashed in the comic books many times. The origin stories always go for good money. Someone might have just gotten lucky. These could have been saved this way. It's really hard to say, but they're in decent condition. The photos aren't so good, but the item itself is really nice looking in my book. Not very yellow. It doesn't look fragile. Really key item here. Again, most of what you find is not going to be worth money, but when I find those huge stacks, even if the stacks aren't in great condition, luckily on many of the occasions I can get them really dirt cheap, five, ten bucks for a huge stack, cut them up, and then sell the dailies in there or the Sunday comics, whichever the case may be. Some half page full color comics can go for five, ten, fifteen, twenty bucks a piece for each one of those comics. Now, here is the first colored Superman um, item here. Now, this is literally the first one. This is the first time they put color in a Superman, and it's actually an advertisement. It's a known piece. This is well collected by some of the, the actual deep collectors. $500 for this piece of paper because it's the first time they colored Superman. The colors are a little off. He almost looks like a green cape. It's just a real good example of what Superman was. Uh, this one, someone's going to preserve probably. You just don't come across these items here. But again, this is an advertisement. It's not really a comic strip. $500 still. Buy it now. It was gone instantly. Another bound edition. Again, they've got all kinds of different topics in it. Dick Tracy, Little Orphan Annie. This is from the, say, 40s or 50s by the price and the material in it. $432, typical what you'll find on these. Most people um, don't look always for these big, thick books like this. A lot of times they're journals or they're bound editions of newspapers. They're usually massive uh, volumes, actually, too. They're big, large size pieces. I always look for them. We've had some. They're semi a pain to ship, but it's well worth the, the investment, let me tell you. Uh, next one here is two books. It's tattered and torn, but it looks like they're actually pretty good condition inside. Someone probably got a pretty good deal off of this. They're from the 40s, and it looks like um, 
a pretty good assortment here from what I see. And if these are as big as I think they are, there's probably some good money to be made. Batman, you can see right off the top, $401, even in the condition you can see. Would have been nice to see some better pictures and some more examples of pages. But either way, I'm sure they probably asked for them. Um, don't see anything in the inside, but still $401. Next one here is closer than we think. This is talking about how close the future and, and new technology is. It's a nice stack of 42 of them. This one doesn't show up very often. They're single clippings, $700 from these. They're Sunday pages. Something like Family Circle, how they did one little uh, cartoon on each page uh, per Sunday. The same kind of thing. $700. This is just a real nice example of one of the scarcer ones. Next one is 1945 Tarzan Clipped Dailies. These are just the daily comics. They've all been bagged, ready to go. Usually they're in sequential order when people do this. They're pre-owned, they're browning, and they have odor, and they still went for $328. Some of these, there's no other source to get the original cartoons because they didn't reprint all of these from what I understand. So these are the only examples in some cases of these cartoons. Some places too, there, there's no examples even in book form on some of these. So that's why some of these go for some good money. Again, you can buy huge stacks of newspapers, cut out the junk parts and save these because you're talking a little section of a whole newspaper. Most of the rest could be damaged, but in, in all likelihood, there's going to be some cartoons and you can mix and match these to some extent too. Next one, some more from the 30s comic strips. And you can see it's just a nice little stack. I always do that. I'll get them in a stack and cut them up that way. And that's the way we sell them. And I sell them constantly. I don't think I have any left at this point from the last big lot we get. These do sell fairly decently quick-wise. Um, some of them you may hang on to depending on how few you have. But they always sell for us. Again, they always sell. So I always mess with these when I run across them. Next one here is just a couple of pages from 1927 and 1929. And they're in color and they're Christmas. Christmas adds to it. It has Santa Claus in it. $315, 13 bids. All, all these are legitimate sales. These are perfect examples. There's three, 4,000 of these type of materials that sell at any given time. So they're worth looking into. Most people pass up the dirty, dingy newspapers. I don't. Even if they're in rough condition, I'll still take a look at them. And many times I can still pull out enough to make a real good return on my investment. You're not going to make a fortune off here. The $750 stacks of, of these aren't going to show up very often, but it doesn't take a lot to make money because usually you get stacks of these for almost nothing. So just take that in consideration. Some more Tarzan. These are from the 60s, and they still went for $305. These went for so much because they're half page. They're bigger size. It looks like almost some of them may be full-sized as well, too. So the larger they are, usually the more they sell for $305. Odor present again. Here's a nice stack, 29 Sundays with Buck Rogers. Back in the day, say 10 years ago, you could sell one Sunday of Buck Rogers in full color and decent condition for 50 bucks. I haven't looked them up recently, so maybe they still sell in the $20, $30 range. Um, I've got some over here now that we got not too long ago. Part of the reason why I'm talking about these today. Um, but they do sell. The bigger they are, as I said, if they're full pages, they usually do very well. So $300 for 29 individual pages. Next one here, 52, 1976, half page. Again, half page, full color. That's what you want. Incredible artwork, nice graphics. Love the spider. Hate spiders, but love the artwork on the spider here. Sequential order here as well, too. You can see the story continues, the spider all the way through. Somebody might bind these up into a book form as well, too. $300. Another stack, Tarzan, 280 they're not just all Tarzan that are worth money, so you know don't just uh, think Tarzan's what you want. There's a ton of many of the sci-fi, any of the superheroes, even Popeye we've sold and Blondie. If you get enough of any of these, they're worth selling. You know, 40, 50 of anything, they're worth selling right off the bat. Here's some half pagers from 1988 and 89, 153 dollars as well. So again, age isn't as much of a factor. So uh, anyway. Just another one here. This is 50 half-page ads of Gasoline Alley. This is Sundays, 1939. It's not as popular, but because it's got Christmas, it's got holidays, it's half-page. They're full color. Real good one here, 150 bucks. They're bright, too, as the person says here. They almost always will have tanning and yellowing. Almost always, so don't discount that. 
Um, now here is a Superman year one. It's got actual full color in it. So that's what you want. The first year they, they came out is usually the best. They've changed the color scheme a lot. Um, it's looking more like the comics itself, the actual comic books. So just a real good example of them. And again, there's stuff on the back too. Brick Bradford, that's a well-collected one too if you can find them. It has holes, so it was actually bound if you see that. That's where someone's taken the stitching out, and that's what they're doing with it. Again, that's what you see those books that sold for $1,600. Someone may do that. Now, there's a safe way to take those apart. It's a long, time-consuming uh, process, too, to be careful so you don't damage any of these. Just pulling out the string that holds these together sometimes can be a, a daunting task, but it's well worth it for stuff like this. So you can see what this one went for here. So. Here's just another one, Dream of Rare Bit Fiend. Uh, it's an oddball topic. It's an early topic. I don't know this one very well. Um, I have seen it a couple pieces of it here and there, but that's about it. There were some Platinum Age comics, actually bound editions of these two. 195. Now, there's going to be characters and figurines and stuff for these as well. I'll count that in a different video because those are more related to toys in my book. The other items that you might find are actual original art. This is Walt Kelly. Look him up. He's very popular. Pogo's been around for a long time. I've had pieces. I've shown articles from Pogo. $485. This is a handmade, hand-drawn, hand-put together. It has the blue line on it as well, too, if you look closely. You can see where he's erased things in the whole works, changed some text. This is a real nice one here. This one's actually about average on some of the prices on these as well, too. So $485. Just another one. This is shoe. I remember reading this as well, too. Same thing, $600. It just depends on, on how collected it is. Shoe's still collected to this day. It's been around recently, so shoe's still something that you can get higher dollars for. So, like if it's Garfield or something, the prices for those go way up, way, way up, or um, Calvin and Hobbes or something like that. So. And the last one here is just an entire printing plate, probably for a Sunday page. These are scarce, $220. I'm surprised it went for so little. Uh, it just, I guess, depends on what's actually on it. If it had like Superman or something, probably it would go for a little more. Let's see if we can see any fabulous ones on here. No, I don't see anything super. You see the text isn't on there yet. Um, and it has a date, specific date, but they'll stamp the text in later on. This is just for the actual um, comics themselves. So. That's pretty much what I have for you today. These last few items, like the original art and the printing plates, just don't show up very often at all. I've never run into a printing plate like this. I've run into some of the smaller ones for like one little section, but that's about it. Original art I have run into many times, so you'll run into those far more than you will the printing plates. Original art's worth more too, so anyway, but that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. There's another item that I do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts, some things to look for. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.